The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Rivermont Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you are worshiping with us online this evening for our Monday, Thursday service. A service where we'll remember that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. A service where we remember that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. A service where we remember that even though he would be betrayed, that he would be denied, he nonetheless gave his body for them and for us. Later in this service, we will be inviting you to participate in communion. So if you do not already have elements for communion, I invite you to gather those. Uh, it can be bread, or cracker, anything you can find of sustenance, and some sort of liquid water, milk, or juice. Next, or excuse me, tomorrow, Good Friday, we will have another service online, our Good Friday service. I hope you will join us for that as well. On Easter Sunday, we have two worship services at 9 o'clock and 11 a.m. in the parking lot. Two outdoor worship services. I hope you uh, take advantage of being able to, to come and worship together. We will continue to practice all the safety procedures, including staying masked and distanced and you'll be invited to sit with the people that you came with, or you can sit in your vehicle and listen on an FM radio station. And you may also watch it online. If you're out of town or you don't feel comfortable worshiping in an outdoor space yet, uh, you can also watch it online on YouTube or Facebook or on Zoom. I also have uh, an update on worship services. Uh, uh, April... 11th is a hymn sing, and we still are welcoming uh, any sort of request that you have. That will be online, but April 18th, we'll begin having outdoor worship services at 9 a.m. It'll be a scaled-down service. And at 11 a.m., uh, for people who have been vaccinated, uh, you may come and worship with us here in the sanctuary. Thanks be to God at 11 a.m., uh, we do need you to let us know in advance so that make sure there's enough space where we can all stay evenly spaced. You can let us know that you're going to be here for the next two months, but we want to be able to be prepared uh, for you all. Lastly, I want to give thanks to God for Bob Watkins. Bob, uh, or Reverend Watkins, was the second pastor here at Rivermont Presbyterian Church. He passed away yesterday. Um, he uh, served here for 20 years, a beloved pastor, and uh, what we have inherited is partially from his labor in this vineyard. So thanks be to God for him and prayers for his family. We'll be sending more information out through constant contact. Grace, mercy, and peace to you all. Let us worship the Lord our God.
The scriptures say, see what love God has for us. That we should be called children of God. In our baptisms, we are claimed by God. We're called children of God. In our baptisms, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male and female. Let us all remember our baptisms. Please join in singing, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Fill us 
us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, willing to wash others' feet. This is the way we should live like you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Scripture reading tonight comes from the Gospel of John in chapter 13. Listen now for the word of God. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table. He took off his outer robe and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin And he began to wash the disciples' feet and he wiped them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master 
nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Sing of glory and his body, wondrous mystery to behold. Blood poured out in death and dying, royal gift so cheaply sold. First a mother selfless offering ransom now for sins untold gift for us and gift forever from the virgin's womb was born flesh of flesh and one among us crucified and put to scorn that the gospel seed might scatter as of old the Lord had sworn at the last the paschal supper with his friends before they fled. First he ate the meal of passage, Paschal lamb and Paschal bread. Then himself as food he offered, that the many might be fed. Word made flesh by word made present, body broken for the feast, and his blood the cup of blessing shed for all by Christ the priest, though the senses fail and falter. Faith confirms true hearts in peace. Holy sacrament, most holy, let us bow on bended knee. Visions of the ancient promise now fulfilled in mystery. Faith declares what none dare fathom. Faith reveals what none may see. God begetter and begotten, yours be praise and majesty. Honor, glory, and salvation, blessing for eternity. With the one proceeding always, equally.
scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 14th chapter. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Not I. Surely not I. I will be ever faithful to you, O Lord. I have followed you through Galilee, into Samaria, to Jericho, and now to Jerusalem, knowing we are facing danger. Surely not I. I and faithful. I pray, I study the Bible, I serve when there's chances. Surely not I, O oh Lord, I will always do whatever you call me to do. Most, most importantly, more poignantly, I will never deny you. And yet, and yet they all did at least abandon him. And Peter, who did in fact love him, denied him three times. So on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, we do not fool ourselves into believing that we would be any different. We would not. I would not. Even knowing how the story plays out, we deny him. 
Maybe not with our words. There aren't many times where someone comes to you and says, is Jesus your Lord? Well, if someone asks you, I imagine you would say yes. But there is more than one way to deny that Jesus is Lord. It's how we live. If Jesus gives us a new commandment that we must love one another as he has loved us, and then we don't, we've denied his lordship. A servant does what the Lord calls him or her to do. And when we don't, we've said you're not Lord. We've denied him. In his worst moment, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was most alone. Listen to God's word for us as we read about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is immediately following the passage that Reverend Petit just read. Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to become distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, for all things are possible with you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and he prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest enough? The hour has come, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The passion. The passion is an epic saga of, a saga of pain and sorrow, and it begins in the garden. I'm not sure that the crucifixion was more painful than this spiritual abandonment, this isolation, this despair. This is what suffering looks like to be betrayed, to feel forsaken, not only by those closest to him, but by God. That is what is at stake. He went and prayed again, please take this cup away from me. I often will then point to, oh, but not my will, your will be done. But my goodness, the man was praying for the cup to be taken away. And to pretend otherwise is to deny the witness that we received from the evangelist. That Jesus was grieved unto death and that he was begging his friends, Peter, James, and John, the ones closest to him, the ones that went up for the transfiguration, stay awake and pray for me. I need you to pray for me. This is Jesus we're talking about. This is what suffering looks like. This is a pained, forsaken man. 
Oh, but their eyes were heavy. Their eyes were heavy. Sadly, it doesn't take us take much for us to turn away, for us to switch to putting ourselves first. Perhaps it's because we had a great day the day before. We were very faithful. And so it's my turn to be first. Or we're just tired, tired of fighting the good fight, tired of injustice that seems to never, never yield to people's voice calling for justice, tired of infighting within your own families, among your friends, in the church, and our eyes get heavy, and we just want to pull away, to withdraw, as if that is going to be the balm of Gilead. Well, it's not. The balm is to Draw closer, always, always to draw closer, to keep awake and keep looking. Once you've gone to sleep because your eyes are heavy, you will not see how the Holy Spirit is at work. Keep awake. Look. Look for glimpses of the Spirit. Find places of hope here and now, today, even in the midst of pain and suffering, because God will not forsake you. One way of understanding the crucifixion of Jesus and why that forsakenness in the garden is so important is he was forsaken so that we never will be. Hear that. That's the one thing I want you to take with you into Good Friday. That forsakenness in the garden, remove this cup. Father, all things are possible with you. Come back, pray again. Remove this cup. Forsaken, abandoned. You are alone in the garden, man. But all so that we would never be forsaken. Even though we fall asleep. Even though we deny Jesus and how we live our lives. Never. Never will you be forsaken. The promise is this. That nothing can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. Neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor rulers, nor principalities and powers. For you, you have been claimed. You have been saved through his suffering, his despair, his prayer. And because he did drink the cup. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing An Upper Room Did Our Lord Prepare.
in Christ our joy shall be made complete, sent out to serve as he was sent. No end there is, we depart in peace. He loves me. Friends, after our prayer of great thanksgiving, and when we say the words as recorded by the Apostle Paul in Corinthians, you will be invited to take bread and to break it yourself and to receive it and to share it with anyone that you might be with and in the same manner to take a cup and receive the cup of salvation. This is the Lord's table. And they will come from east and west, north and south, to feast at the table of the Lord. No one earns a place at the table, and yet all are invited. Siblings in Christ, this table has been prepared for you. Friends, let us pray. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Thank you, O God, for sending us your son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, on the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, He gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken. Do this in remembrance of me. Receive the bread. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Receive the cup. Friends, whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
Such love. 